So hi, welcome back. Uh, my name is Adrian Hall. I am the Senior Program Manager for Azure Mobile. And this half hour, we're going to be talking about connected apps and uh, dealing with the cloud in general. So when we take a look at some of the problems that people have with apps, it really calls into um, the, the fact that you need these backends and you need data experiences. The top two experiences are laggy experiences that, uh, that cause people to delete apps and, and generally have a bad experience, slow or laggy experiences, and the data not being available when you need it. Um, we can do something about that, and we'll cover that uh, uh, later on in this uh, half hour. The next three are all, unfortunately, up to you, the developer. And they are crashes, bad user experiences, and features that uh, you advertise on the App Store but you uh, don't actually provide. So I can't help you with those last three, but let's concentrate on those top two. When we take a look at coverage, uh, mobile coverage around the world, the US is actually pretty good. There's lots of green um, here, but you see the pockets of red, and you see the pockets, particularly on the West Coast in Mexico, where there are no coverage at all. So even within the US, which is considered one of the um, top connected countries in the world, we still have lots of connectivity issues. When we go overseas, like Africa, for example, we see that it's much worse. And this is a all data coverage uh, on the mobile cellular spectrum. You, you can see that there's lots of blanks. But when we switch over to 4G, which is considered really a baseline for connectivity needs, you can see it's much, much worse. So the likelihood is, if you're targeting your app to the US, you're likely to get really good coverage. But if you're targeting it worldwide, you're really going to have to focus on what happens when the mobile phone, the mobile app, doesn't have connectivity. So what about a back end? There are lots of options here. Um, mobile back ends provide, in essence, three uh, basic services. First of all, they let you know what your user, who your user is, whether they're authenticating via a custom backend or via something like a social provider like Facebook or uh, Twitter, for example. Um, they provide data access, so how do you actually get data to and from the, the app? And they provide some sort of notification service. Everything beyond that is, is really a, a second tier thing, things like media, um, search, cognitive services that was um, shown off in the uh, last uh, half hour. Um, so there are plenty of options. We're going to concentrate on one. Um, since we're Microsoft, we're going to concentrate on that first one here, Azure Mobile Apps. Azure Mobile Apps starts with a client SDK. Um, you can download this from uh, NuGet for uh, Xamarin. Um, if you're you know, on the fence with Xamarin, this is your first exposure to Xamarin, and you're kind of going like, well, what about iOS? What about Android? What about Windows? What about hybrid apps? Um, there are other options that provide the same functionality. We cover the full spectrum of mobile SDKs. They all talk to a RESTful API in the cloud. And this is where the, um, the, the facilities for Azure Mobile Apps comes in. Um, we provide data access to SQL and NoSQL data sources. We provide user authentication. You can just add a single line of code to your Xamarin application and get authentication to either Facebook, Twitter, Microsoft, Google account, or and you're, if you're in the enterprise, Azure Active Directory. And finally, we have push notifications, the ability to send out-of-band applications that wake up your app and display those nice marketing messages. And we support the full range of push notifications, most notably APNS for your iOS applications and FCM, Firebase uh, uh, Cloud Notifications for uh, Google. We also support Windows, Kindle. And if you're in uh, some of the foreign uh, areas, uh, China, for example, we support Baidu uh, as well. So there's a big range there. We also support offline sync to those SQL and NoSQL databases. Now, that allows you to provide a table's worth of data to your mobile client in a way that makes it accessible on the mobile client without any uh, connectivity. So that means that, number first of all, you're going to get that data available when your connection is not available. And secondly, you're only going against a local database on the mobile 
um, client, you're not going against a cloud-based database. So that means that any bandwidth concerns or, or laggy connections won't affect the experience that you give to your users. Now that's backed up by Azure App Service, which is a world-class web hosting facility and provides all of the DevOps capabilities that a the that, that backend requires, including things like connectivity to your um, your source code repository, a database access, monitoring, uh, and alerting capabilities. Why do we think um, Azure is a, is a good plan? First of all, it is extremely powerful. We have 200 plus uh, services within Azure. Um, one of the uh, big things, for example, we saw a question come across the, uh, uh, the wire, which is how can I if I've only got one machine, if I've only got an iOS machine or, or, or a Mac rather for building iOS, how can I build Windows applications as well? And ditto the other way, if I only have a Windows machine, how do I build my iOS applications? Well, you can put those resources, those build resources on virtual machines in the cloud. Um, if you're on a Windows machine and you want to use, uh, you want to do um, iOS builds, then you can do that um, via a service called Macing Cloud or you can use the new Visual Studio Mobile Center that uh, we're going to be talking about in the next half hour. If you are on a Mac and you want to build Windows machines, Windows applications in the uh, cloud, you can spin up a Windows VM in Azure extremely easily, and it will have all of the developer resources that you uh, need to build that app. Um, Azure is very flexible. In terms of app service, we have many ways of uh, developing backends. Um, we also have this capability called Easy Tables. And Easy Tables is basically, uh, let me hook up a data source, like a SQL database, to a and web enable it and not have to write any code whatsoever. And I'm going to show that off a little later. And finally, we're talking about C Sharp here. There is C Sharp everywhere. Um, obviously, for Xamarin, we can do iOS, Android, and Universal Windows with the same um, code base. We can do uh, the C Sharp backend with ASP.NET, and the clients are all the clients and the server code are all open sourced. So this gives you the capability of having your C Sharp mobile application um, being cross compiled to uh, Apple, Android, and Windows, and a ASP.NET server written in C Sharp running on Azure, and then have a shared C Sharp library that gives you the models and so on um, that across the board so that you're, you're writing once and you're using it in multiple places. And all of this stuff is 100% native. So what about the bad mobile experiences? Well, the mobile apps offline sync gives you the capability of fixing that slow or laggy experience because you're going against a database that is local to your mobile device. Um, and the data is always available because you're synchronizing it um, to the mobile backend um, as it changes. So uh, if you uh, really want to, if you really want to get, fix those two, first two problems, you really want to be looking at offline sync capabilities. The other three, sorry, we still can't help you with. Um, however, come back in the next half hour, and uh, we'll be taking a look at uh, uh, the crashes and uh, seeing what you can do about that. So I'm going to switch over to my Azure portal, um, and I will just bring up a quick another browser here because I do want to show you one um, thing. For those of you that don't have an Azure subscription right now, you can start by for free by going to azure.com, and there's this big green Start Free button. There are other alternatives. If you are a small uh, a startup um, company, there is the BizSpark program from uh, Microsoft. If you are a student, your school might be allowing you to sign up for DreamSpark. So there are other options. And you can run, once the free trial is um, over, which gives you basically 30 days of um, free service with uh, Azure, um, you can actually continue to run your mobile backend for free in, um, on uh, Azure. So once you log into um, Azure. This is the portal. It's portal.azure.com. Um, and I'm going to create a new backend. Now, I've taken the liberty of creating a SQL database um, for this um, so that I, I don't uh, actually, uh, 
I don't actually need to uh, wait around for uh, that, uh, that uh, deployment. But the thing that we're looking for is mobile app. And you can see right here, all I did was I clicked on the plus button, that, which is new, and I typed in mobile apps and, and hit to enter. And this brought me to the, um, the search page with the mobile app as being the first match. I can click on that and then click on create. And I'm going to create a mobile backend called Dev Days Live. Um, I'm going to use an existing um, uh, resource group, but you could create your own. Resource groups are great for collecting Azure resources together. The big advantage from a developer point of view is when you're finished with those resources, you can do one click, delete, um, and it will delete all the resources within a resource group. It will also allow you to, to price the resources that you're running on on a application basis. Um, I'm going also going to create a new mobile app service plan, and this is really what's running the uh, the this is fundamentally it's the VM that the app service is running on. So I'm going to call this Dev Days Live as well, and I'm going to put this in the region West US, which is where we are today. Where is West US? It's there somewhere. Yep, West US. Um, but if you are uh, if you're running in Europe or you're running in Asia, pick the um, service that's closest to you. Um, the other piece that I want to do is I want to know how much it's going to cost me, and I want to know what sort of VM it's running on. I can click on View All here, um, and I'll get all of the um, all of the services. Now, as you scale up, you're going to want to run more of these, and App Service will s scale out seamlessly for you. Um, but I'm going to pick a B1 basic um, here, um, which is a, you know, it's a small machine. It's uh, got SSL, but it allows me to manually scale. As we go up into the standards and the premiums, it allows me to scale even more. You notice that there is a free option. So you can actually, if you're just building a, uh, a proof of concept or something like that, you're just doing some development work, you can use the F1 free model. You just have to be aware that after a while, Azure will turn that service off for you to save money. So I'm going to set the B1 Basic, and I'm going to click on OK. And then that's uh, created that. I can add Application Insights to this. I'm not going to this time, but Application Insights is a method of providing monitoring and reporting for your backend uh, capabilities. So it's going to validate, and then it's going to go off and actually start the deployment. You can monitor the deployment by clicking on this little alarm bell notifications thing here, and it will take a little while um, to uh, run. So whilst that's running, let's talk about the client uh, somewhat, and then we'll come back and see how to create a um, service. There is an azure.mobile.client um, NuGet package that you're going to need to uh, install in your project. That gives you a, I think it's azure.mobile.client.mobile service client class. And you're going to give that class the URL of your website. Now, I created Dev Days Live. Um, so I'm got, my website is going to be https colon whack whack devdayslive.azurewebsites.net. So this is named by your uh, endpoint. The next thing I'm going to do is create a table. Now, before we, can, before we can access that table, we're going to actually have to create the table in the back end. So my deployment has succeeded. I'm going to go into my resources. And there's my Dev Days Live um, site. And you can see this URL, http devdayslive.azurewebsites.net. The HTTP version will redirect to the HTTPS version. So uh, uh, don't worry about that. And the first thing I need to do is set up a database. So I'm going to go into data connections, and I'm going to add a data connection to this. And it's going to be a SQL database. Now I said earlier I'd already created a SQL database. Um, this will actually allow you to uh, create a, a database as well. It just takes some time. And the other thing is I'm going to have to create is a connection string. So I'm going to type in my SQL server username and password that I've set up. Um, 
and I, I do that when I set up the uh, database. Uh, then click on OK, and that's going to do the connection for me. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type in Quick Starts, and I'm going to actually deploy a back end. Now, there are two ways of deploying, uh, of doing these back ends. First of all, you can create your own back end. We have a full set of ASP.NET based um, libraries that allow you to create table controllers that are suitable for the uh, Azure Mobile Apps client SDKs. Uh, fundamentally, the Azure Mobile Apps client uh, uh, server protocol is OData, so we do that. Um, we're doing Xamarin Forms today, so I'm going to do a Xamarin Forms, and I can actually just create the back end by um, clicking on the Create to Do Item table. And it's going to do all the work for me now that I have connected a database um, to the system. And where again, we're going to see the back end is initializing. So that to do item is actually the first table that we've uh, created. That's going to be available once it uh, deploys, um, and that will take some time. It's going to be available in the um, in the easy table setting. So let me show you where that is quickly. I'll click. Uh, let me kill that. Um, go back here. Um, so this is my mobile app, and if I type in easy tables, uh, too many clicks. If I click in. Type in Easy Tables. It's under the mobile section. And this is where you'll see the tables once it's been deployed. So back to the uh, slides. Now that I've got a table, or at least I will have once that back end is um, deployed, I'm going to want to be able to access it. There are two ways of accessing tables. So you get to decide which data you want to provide as offline and which, which type of data you want to provide online. Sometimes historical data, you, you only want to be able to search online because of the space constraints of a mobile device. So to create an online table, you just create a mobile service table with a specific model. That model class you create. And, um, and then when you're, um, when you're uh, initializing your back end in the client, you, are, you just get a reference to that table. And then you can use it with link queries, for example, with uh, just being able to use it as a, as a standard collection. Oops. Yep. Come on. There we go. Um, if you want to do it offline, there's a little bit more work to do. Um, the first thing is you have to set up a database on the back end. Now, Azure Mobile Apps provides access to a SQLite database, and you have to put that somewhere on the store. So you have to set up that first. And then you define the table um, in that SQLite store. But finally, you need a synchronization handler. And then you get the, instead of, instead of getting the table reference, you get the sync table reference. So now that same table, it's still a collection. It's still, you can still use link against it, um, but instead of um, being on an online version where you're going against the cloud uh, data, you're going to be going against a local database. So five lines of extra um, code, and you've got an offline capable table. When you're actually create, when you're actually getting data, um, it's you have to pull the data for a a, a sync uh, table. If you're just doing the the uh, online table, you just call to enumerable async, and that will give you the, uh, the data in, as an I enumerable. Um, otherwise, you can actually create a pull. You do a pull async. Um, there is a flip side of that. When you're updating data, you want to do a push async. So, and that looks, like, um, that looks like this. So you add, you insert. Now, the pull async will automatically do a push async for you. Um, but if you're doing lots of tables, you might want to do the push async once at the beginning and then parallelize your uh, pulls across all of the tables. So let me flip back uh, whilst we're uh, going here. And uh, this should be deployed now. At least I hope it's deployed. There we go. And we've got a to-do item here. So. 
the actual service does provide other things. So, for example, um, authentication. Now, I'm going to show you quickly how easy it is to turn on authentication and get an Azure AD authentication uh, feed. So I'm just going to turn the authentication on. The important piece here is to allow anonymous requests, which is the default. I'm going to go in and configure an Azure AD uh, environment. Now, every single Azure account has an Azure AD associated with it. It might not be the right one for you. Um, but I'm going to select Express. And I'm going to create a new app, um, AD app. And I'm just going to call it Dev Days Live. That's great. Um, and click on OK. That's it. I'm configured. That's, that's all there is to configuring authentication on the back end. Um, however, I do want to go back into Easy Tables. And my to do item, I'm going to actually set it up so that you can change the permissions for it so that you can create a, a, a permissions thing. So what we want to do, I think it just logged me in again. Fun. <laughs> what we want to do here, um, as that's uh, coming back up, is to, uh, is to actually set up the authentication so that that to-do item is only available via the, um, via the, the authenticated uh, connection. So I can click on Change Permissions, and I can say, yeah, man, there we go. Right now, it's all um, allow anonymous access. But I can go authenticated access only, and, and just go all the way down the list. And you can see, you can ha actually have permissions based on uh, individual operations. So if, for example, uh, you wanted a, a table that own people could only read and insert from, but they weren't allowed to update or delete, you could actually turn those permissions off. So I'm going to disable the update and the delete, and just click on Save. And now I've got that, um, that read-only type, or read and insert-only uh, availability. So that's how you do authentication. Um, we actually support Facebook, Twitter, Google, and the Microsoft account, as well as Azure AD. Um, you can also roll your own. Um, rolling your own infrastructure is kind of difficult. It's, it's, it does take a lot more uh, knowledge than uh, you would expect when you're uh, starting out and going like, well, I'll just add a, add a custom authenticator um, to my project. So we've provided five for you, the five most popular ones that we see. Um, you, can, you can definitely add your own, though. The other piece that we really um, add a lot of value at is push notifications. Now, if you are not using the push notifications in Azure or a similar service, then what you would have to do is you would have to treat every single provider differently. So um, if you wanted to push to your IOS accounts, for example, um, you would have to deal with APNS directly, and you'd have to push to every single APNS uh, every single iOS device individually. Same for Firebase and, and for Windows. What Azure has is a service called Notification Hubs. And this allows you to push cross-platform notifications to, to all of your devices at the same time with a single call. It just handles it for you. Um, on the larger side, it will also give you analytics about who opened it and who read those, um, uh, those uh, notifications. And the way you do that is you use your regular platform notification service. So iOS, it's APNS. And Google, it's FCM. And Windows, it's WNS. And you get the device token. And that's done in the platform dependent code of your Xamarin forms, or it's uh, done in your um, Xamarin.iOS or Xamarin.android application. It's done by the operating system that runs the mobile device. And you get a device token. And you pass that to the app, app service back end. And it will register the token for you. And then in the back end, you can, you can push a cross-platform notification. It will be received by everybody. Another great um, uh, piece of technology is file sync. So just like we did for data, um, we sometimes want to sync files, things like photographs, videos, that sort of thing. So we have the ability to attach files to database uh, structure. Uh, 
to the database uh, entries and sync those to Azure Storage, which is a very highly scalable um, regional storage uh, facility. And then you can sync those back and forth just like you did with your structured data. So I've got five minutes left, so I just want to give you a few resources for you because this, is, this can get very complicated very quickly. Um, first of all, the Bible, which I happen to be writing at the moment, so uh, if you want to join in and uh, review the book as it's going, um, is at aka.ms slash zoomabook. And if I just uh, click on that, uh, you'll see it's, it's fully online, and uh, we go through the full authentication. So if you really want to get deep into custom authentication, this is the place to come. Uh, data access and sync, including dealing with relationships and dealing with NoSQL options, uh, server-side code, uh, push notifications, it's all there at the moment. So uh, that's the first place that you can, uh, you can go. If you have a question, um, we regularly monitor the people that know, regularly monitor Stack Overflow, and I really recommend that you ask questions there because you reach a wider community. Um, Azure Forums is a, is a great backup because the support guys also uh, uh, monitor those. And finally, uh, we've just re redone our documentation set. Um, it's now on docs.microsoft.com the same way as all the other Microsoft um, type documentation. So you can uh, reach us. And uh, again, I'm just going to switch to my browser and open up um, a browser, docs.microsoft.com, and click on Windows Azure, and then Web and Mobile. And mobile apps are right here. And uh, this gives you all of the how-tos that get started. The other place I would r recommend you keep an eye on, uh, particularly if you find a bug. I mean, no, one, no code is perfect. So if you find a bug, um, github.com slash Azure. And if you type in Azure-mobile there, you're going to get all of the mobile apps server SDK and client SDKs. Um, our quick starts and our samples, lots of great stuff there as well. Um, all of our code is open source, so you're quite welcome to contribute as well as uh, just nitpicking on the, uh, on the bugs. So uh, feel free. So that's, uh, that, that's it for me. I'm just going to put the uh, resource slide uh, back up. And uh, if no one's got any uh, questions, we're, we're good. <laughs>